an aha moment occurs, illustrating that even when a very small model is developed, it can still work effectively and efficiently. This is no exaggeration. It genuinely performs well. Of course, applying such a compact model in on-device AI is essential, but unfortunately, I ended up catching a cold and made a total of 12 videos, including one about OpenAI. It was an intense and frenzied journey, but before I take some medicine and get some rest, I felt it was only courteous to wrap this up since the weekend isn't over yet. So, let's explore this topic one last time. A PhD student from Berkeley has developed a new AI model called Tiny Zero, which closely follows the methodology proposed by DeepSeek AI. Technically, it is not open source. They revealed the parameters and explained the process, but kept some details hidden. Still, they made it available and wrote a technical report on it. As I've mentioned in several videos, I followed the method exactly. There were aha moments and everything worked well. I only spent $30 to train this, which is quite significant. It makes you think, wow, this really works for practical purposes. You might just brush it off and think, oh, the world is really changing. Or consider how China and other high flyers are approaching this. DeepSeek, which is a subsidiary of a hedge fund, has approached this in a way that can be recognized as a legitimate software solution. There are many discussions surrounding this topic and the mention of $30 is quite attention grabbing. As mentioned in this notebook, just the work involved in a PhD program would likely cost more than $30. Naturally, PhD students here are paid quite modestly and work extremely hard. I've been through that myself. So, the claim that this can be replicated for $30 might be misleading if taken literally, as it could be misunderstood as obtaining DeepSeek for $30. Let me clarify this for you. And from there, we can explore what insights we can gain from this. Let's take a moment to summarize the technical insights we can gain from this and also hear your thoughts on the matter. So, this is the person we are talking about, G.I. Ban, who appears to be a man and not a woman. Even Andre Karpathy mentioned that Tiny Zero is a reproduction of R10, which costs less than $30, allowing you to experience that aha moment. As I mentioned in my previous video, let me explain once again what is meant by the aha moment. This is a great opportunity to understand how DeepSeek is developed, so let me take a moment to clarify that. Jaipan introduced it in this way, and you can find more detailed information on GitHub. The model is called Tiny Zero, and it was created by Jaipan. Tiny Zero isn't just another iteration of DeepSeek R1, it's actually called DeepSeek R10. These two are different, so let me clarify that for you once more. By replicating the reinforcement learning approach employed in Zero, we discovered that even with a compact model like Tiny Zero, the system experienced moments of realization and functioned effectively. The performance evaluation was done using a very straightforward method, which I will explain in more detail soon. To fully understand this, we first need to... To understand the workings of DeepSeek, it's essential to briefly review its overall structure. The DeepSeek R1 paper, which made headlines, was published on January 22nd, 2025, and it caused quite a sensation in the tech community. Following that, last month, the foundational model for R1, called DeepSeek version 3, was unveiled. To develop the R1 model, the V3 version is absolutely necessary, as it forms the backbone of the system's efficiency. This was emphasized in the V3 technical report, particularly regarding the expenses linked to the H800. The abstract explicitly mentioned that the training process consumed 2.788 million H800 GPU hours. The expenditure for GPU usage reached a staggering $5.576 million. This amount was frequently highlighted in the press. Was it the Washington Post that initially reported this? I think it was the New York Times. Reflecting on it a week later, it seems like the article might have been deliberately written to be somewhat sensational. Upon examining this paper, it becomes clear that the figure 5,576 exclusively refers to the costs associated with the official training of DeepSeek V3. This figure does not account for any preliminary experiments, architectural research, or other preparatory activities. Nonetheless, V3 is a crucial prerequisite for developing R1. To understand how the learning process actually works, we start with DeepSeek R10. It's based on the R1-0 model, but the real breakthrough is with R1, not R1-0. So how do we use the R1 materials? Don't worry about complex formulas. It goes through a process called Group Relative Policy Optimization, or GRPO. Think of it like cooking. You'd normally follow a recipe, like Baek jong wons YouTube recipes for home-cooked meals. It follows instructions exactly as given. But without a recipe, it just gathers ingredients and tries things out on its own. No matter if it takes 100 years or 10 years, it keeps experimenting like cooking. Eventually, it finds the best method. This this approach, called GRPO, also uses reinforcement learning techniques. The goal is to improve its way of thinking. The method proposed to enhance reasoning, or the process of thinking, is this one. There are two types of rewards, accuracy reward and format reward. You get a reward if your accuracy is high, and you get a reward if your response format is good. So, pay close attention, and remember this well. What are the core elements, accuracy rewards, and format rewards? This is the core of DeepSeek R10. What copied the core of R10? A Berkeley PhD student who is probably working hard now. 
The timing of their replication of Tiny Zero was impeccable, costing only $30. Yet, even at this minimal expense, Tiny Zero experienced an aha moment much like DeepSeek R10. When you observe the performance of DeepSeek R10, you can see its accuracy progressively improving with each step. In essence, it becomes smarter as time goes by. Similarly, as the step size increases, the length of the response leverage also gets longer. This means that the leverage length is extending. Although this isn't the final model yet, DeepSeek R10 experiences an aha moment. What does it do? It constructs a chain of thought, which is a sequence of logical thinking steps. This process can take quite some time. As you add more tabs, the responses become increasingly lengthy, right? This elongation signifies a structured thought process, which is referred to as the chain of thought. It enables a systematic and coherent flow of ideas, similar to what we call prompt engineering. The role of R10 is to facilitate this structured thinking up to this point. Do you understand? So, what Tiny Zero did was to emulate this method and follow it very closely. Now, although I would love to jump straight into explaining Tiny Zero, let's not rush and take our time to savor the details. Next, what happens is we gather all those chain of thought responses that were generated by DeepSeek R10, meticulously organize them, and then use them for supervised learning instead of reinforcement learning. The concept here is to utilize the previous base frontier model, specifically the B3 model, for training purposes. And this entire process is referred to as cold start. I wasn't able to go into detail earlier, but cold start essentially involves creating data to generate a chain of thought, and then using this generated data to train the DeepSeq version 3 base model. Think of this as using the data as the initial point for reinforcement learning. Then, the process of honing the ability to think through reinforcement learning becomes even more sophisticated and efficient. By generating additional data and fine-tuning the model, you can ultimately enhance both non-reasoning and reasoning data, leading to a more robust AI system. When you incorporate everything together, you later perform a process called distillation, and that ultimately becomes the final DeepSeq R1 model. So, you don't need to go all the way to the final model initially because the real significance lies in the AI algorithm and software. Reinforcement learning generates a chain of thought, which leads to those insightful aha moments. Even with a tiny model, it worked well with reinforcement learning. This is not a lie, it worked great. Since it was released as an open model, anyone can implement it, so they wouldn't lie about it. And it actually worked. Tiny Zero was tested with simple math problems. It handled basic calculations well. For example, 19, 36, 55, 7. They used this to form an equation that results in 65. Then they reasoned, if we apply this method, we get the solution. How did they manage to achieve this solely through reinforcement learning? They developed a 3 million base RM model and reduced it to under $30. Honestly, I'm not sure where the $30 figure came from. I think they excluded labor costs, but this is the answer they got. Check the Twitter thread for a more detailed discussion. They implemented something very small, but the key point is they used the same rewarding method as R10. When I told you to stay sharp, this is what I meant, right? By utilizing both accuracy reward and formal reward, it ensures that for math problems, the solutions are precisely correct. Additionally, for coding problems, they tested whether the code runs correctly by using actual test cases. In terms of format issues, they verified if the answers were accurately expressed by using the appropriate tags for think and answer. So by giving rewards, it worked properly. This means there will be multiple outputs and it will reward the best answer. As I mentioned earlier, in DeepSeek, don't give unclear rewards. Give clear and significant rewards to the ones performing well. It's the same with people. You need to pay them properly to make them work hard. If you pay them ambiguously, they won't work. The term reward is interesting. We tested both large and small models. No matter how many steps we took, small models sometimes couldn't do it. The vertical axis represents the score. Even with more steps, they couldn't think beyond a certain point. For the slightly larger model, which is 1.5 billion, and the 3 billion and 7 billion models, we saw they follow the scaling law. Even with such a small model, they demonstrated that it could generate chain of thought, COT, based on overfitting or something similar for just $30. So, what do you think about that? Consider the possibility of embedding this compact model into on-device AI for gadgets like smartphones, Vision Pro, and eventually even Bluetooth earphones. Could it enable functionalities such as noise cancellation through AI? Doesn't that sound like a plausible forecast? Certainly, after R10, DeepSeek utilized the trained data from the Frontier model to develop DeepSeek R1v3, achieving enhanced performance. However, for some specific specific applications, could this approach be applied as well? For instance, since it was quite adept at solving math problems, it can be interpreted in several different ways. In this regard, DeepSeek's approach of pursuing reinforcement learning separately and at a minimal cost seems quite valid. Of course, the mention of $30 specifically pertains to the small model, Tiny Zero, so there is no need for any confusion. Instead of supervised fine-tuning, the approach was to allow it to study and learn on its own through reinforcement learning. This represents a significant software advancement. As Dr. Young Young Hoon from OpenAI mentioned, effectively utilizing reinforcement learning to fine-tune tasks is the current trend in designing AI models, leading to what's next.
I realize that Tiny Zero isn't just a theoretical vision. However, it is designed to perform specific tasks, such as generating a chain of thought, and it is limited to these unique functions. It's not just about this, but more advanced developments keep coming out based on this. With DeepSeek emerging, OpenAI's R10 is causing a stir. This competition is heating up, and everyone is working harder. From an academic perspective, this should be seen as a proof of concept. It proves the concept and shows it can be replicated, even at a low cost. Although it is a key mechanism, we still need to see if it can actually progress to low-cost applications applications, and about the $30 figure mentioned in the articles, as a YouTuber, I apologize if the thumbnail was a bit clickbait, it's something we often have to do, but please don't get too hung up on that $30 figure. In reality, when this becomes generalized, don't miss out on these updates, and I hope you find them useful.